Welcome to Zimmerman Podcast, Episode 60. Today, I'm sitting down with a real deal Zimmerman student, Emily Phillips. Emily is an artist who discovered her passion for floral design while living overseas with her husband. Once returning to the U.S., Emily started investing in her floral business and found Zimmerman Education after realizing that I'm also an entrepreneur with young kids, building and growing a business while striving to be a present mom and a healthy human. Anyone else out there relate? Emily bought The Power of Pinning, my easy-to-understand Pinterest for Business course, and has been loving the course and her Pinterest results ever since. Listen to Emily's story of using Pinterest to market her services to get paid and get back some of her precious time with her kids. Emily is so relatable, and her insider insights into the power of pinning are worth their weight in gold. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. In just two years, Jessica went from facing bankruptcy to taking home a six-figure salary. She turned a business-saving $100,000 loan into a million-dollar empire. As a creative entrepreneur, a healthy work-life balance seems just as unattainable as a six-figure income. But Jessica Zimmerman is here to show you it's possible. With the right tools and insider tips and some hard work, your craziest dreams can become your daily routine. If you set some boundaries and commit to healthy changes, you can create a business and a life you love. So let's make your business work for you. Okay. Hi, Emily. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. This is really an honor to be on here and to be speaking to you. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. That is so kind of you. This is going to be really fun. I know we said in the intro that you're, you know, a student of mine, um, but there is there is so many more things to you than that. I mean, that's like <laughs> that's nothing compared to who you are and what you do. So tell us about about who you are, what you do, and how you came to find, you know, Zimmerman education and all that good stuff. Well, one of the things that first drew me to you, a friend told me about you when I was starting my floral business. We had just moved back to the U.S. My husband and I had been abroad for a couple of years. And one of the things I ha- that I had done when I was abroad was I was working for an art gallery in Singapore. And on the weekends, my husband was so busy, I thought, well, on the weekends, I'll just play with flowers. I'll work at this cute little boutique that did very airy uh, floral arrangements that were very pretty. And I thought, well, I'll just get my hands dirty and loved it. My background is in art and flowers just became this medium that really spoke to me and absolutely fell in love. And I thought when we go back to the U.S., this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do flowers. And um, so that turned into weddings. And at the beginning, I just, starting is so difficult. When you have, going from zero to something is is just really hard. It took me like a year to get started um, just because I didn't know what to do or where to go. And then I got pregnant, which we wanted and was fabulous. But, you know, that made me nervous too. I was like, well, I can't do something totally new when I'm about to have a kid. But I met another floral designer in the area that we had moved back to. And um, she told me about you. And when I found out that you had kids and started hearing your story and your background, how you got through thrown into this situation where you needed all of a sudden your family was relying on you for your income and you were having kids at the same time. Like all of that just resonated so much with me. And I thought this is someone I need to listen to. And you have always spoken so clearly about what you do. Um, Just every, the way you approached everything and your drive and your love for like the business side, not just for the, the creative aspect of it, that really spoke to me too. Cause I love, I love all the behind the scenes things, the work on the website, I mean, even spreadsheets. <laughs> and I thought that was really unique um, to you and also unique to me. And I thought this is one reason why my creative business is going to thrive is because I actually like this stuff. And I love the way I've always loved the way that you've talked about it. So when I discovered you and started listening, I listened to it, all your free things, took all your free courses. Um, and then 
I think I bought a little one at one point, but when I started hearing about you coming out with the Pinterest course, I was like, okay, when this comes out, I am definitely getting on this and purchasing this. I was one, I think I was one of the first people to buy it. Yeah. I was just really excited about that. I love that. You know, that's interesting because uh, I think Pinterest, the power of pinning is the hardest thing to sell because I think that people, they just don't want to hear it. Like they are used to using Pinterest the way they use it, which is as a user, not as a seller. You know, they are used to using it and going on and pinning their own images to, you know, boards, their own boards and, you know, putting their dream house vision board together and their their fashion wardrobe together. And they're not used to looking at it from what it was actually created to do, which is to take a, a, a user on a platform and then take them away from it to have an experience, a, 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 an inspirational experience or a buying experience or whatever. And I think, um, you know, unless you hang around to really hear that, that pitch, um, that explanation, then you're not going to get through to people. And so what was it about hearing, oh, there's a, we have a program, it's called the power of pinning that made you go, oh man, I'm going to get that. Yeah. Well, one of the things was I had no idea what to do with Pinterest. So (laughs) when I got married, I refused to use Pinterest. This was almost six years ago. I refused to use Pinterest because I had enough ideas on my own. I didn't think that I needed more ideas. So, and then until I started my business, I mean, I had just never used Pinterest, but I started using it when I started my floral business just to pull images in order to create more attractive proposals. And I would pull like actual flowers on there to kind of see them, group them together and be like, you know, okay, is this a good, do I need something that's bigger or fluffier or whatever? Um, So I was starting to use it that way, but every single board was private because it was just for me to prep for my clients. So when I started hearing you talk about the power of pinning, I was very interested because I knew that I had loved all the other things that you had had put out. So if you were putting out a Pinterest course, I thought that you would really present it the way that I needed to hear it and that would make sense to me. The other thing was I didn't get on. (laughs) I'm actually in my 20s. I'm going to sound really old, but (laughs) I've never been like a big social media person or in the past I wasn't. So I didn't get on to um, Instagram until like 2015 when I had to for my gallery job in Singapore. And don't tell my old boss that because I was the marketing person. But um, (laughs) (laughs) um, so I kind of missed the Instagram train. Like a lot of people who did, who have done really well with Instagram with their businesses, this isn't true across the board, of course, but a lot of people who did really well with Instagram, they were getting on it earlier before all of the algorithms got really weird. So I, I kind of missed that. And by the time I had my business uh, a few years ago, started that and got on Instagram, it wasn't so easy to be seen and to grow. And when I started hearing you talk about Pinterest being a somewhat untapped resource for building kind of brand awareness and getting clients, I thought, okay, here's my chance to get in on a platform while the getting is good. (laughs) So that kind of sold me on that. Yeah, that's what's so wonderful about Pinterest and why I I'm going to continue to scream about it, even though it's like the most boring thing for most people to hear. But it like Instagram and Facebook, the way they were built is if you take a user away from that platform, you're going to get penalized. You know, less people are going to see you and that kind of thing. And the thing about Pinterest is two things that I find amazing is that number one, it was designed to take people away and to for them to have that experience and to purchase. And um, But the other thing is that you can pin something once and it continues to do the work for you all day, every day, right? week after week, month after month, year after year. I mean, I still get inquiries from a pin that I pinned three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago, we pinned it once and it is just doing the work. And, you know, you look at something like Instagram, like right now, I think I have about 13,000 followers, but I mean, honestly, 
you know, there's maybe 600 of those that are really engaged and hanging out and looking at stories and all of that. Whereas you, if you look at Pinterest, and that's why I think Instagram, I guess for me personally, I, d- I never want to say this like, like a blanket statement across the board, but for me personally, you know, with Pinterest, gosh, I, I pin something once and I'm not having to write copy or anything, you know, it's just a pin and it's, and I'm getting, you know, 2 million views a month. Like that's crazy. And those are the things that are converting into sales. And it doesn't matter what you do, whether whether you do florals or weddings or if you are a painter or if you, you know, uh, do if you have, sell baking lessons or online tutorials or whatever, you could have a hair salon. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can make real money with Pinterest. So you pulled the trigger, you bought the program and tell me what you thought about the program. I loved it. <laughs> it was just, it was really easy to go through and you explained everything like exactly where when I needed it to be explained. Just the order of it and the clarity were just amazing. Like I I mean like I said before, I had never used Pinterest before for anything except like privately saved pins. I mean, if I could get through it, so easily like that, then anybody can do it because I had no, I hadn't experimented with Pinterest in any way or form. And I was starting from like totally starting from zero. Um, Like I knew how to pin from somebody else's pin. And that was about it. So it was, yeah, it was awesome. It was really important to me because I I had written business behind the blooms and that was just 100%, you know, me, I mean, Kelly, you know, made it look pretty, you know, for everybody to see. We wanted it to be, you know, visually beautiful, but I, you know, I wrote that thing and it was just 100% me and how I felt and what I did and everything. And I wanted the power of pinning to be equally as transparent. But the truth of the matter is, is that I had hired a Pinterest manager to do my Pinterest for me. And then I started having students say, how are you getting all these views? And I was like, I don't know, you know, like I, I hired someone to do it. And, but I realized like, okay, Let's go back a few years to when you didn't have any money, <laughs> like, and you could not pay. You, you would not have been able to pay someone fifteen hundred dollars a month for to do your Pinterest. And so I reached out to her, and her name's Catherine Morehouse. I'm sure some of y'all have heard her here on the podcast, but I said to her, "Listen, I want to offer this program. It's got to be in the same kind of really transparent way." But like, you're going to have to explain this because I don't, I don't know. And what I love is that we were able to write a program that is very transparent. I tell, I mean, we show you, here's the exact pins I use. Here's ones that work. Here's ones that don't. Here's how you do it. Here's the secret of putting in keywords. That's how you start making money and all of that. And then the other thing that I'm so proud of about the power of pinning is that my Pinterest manager, who I pay $1,500 a month for, that you get full access to her. So you can ask her anything you want in that program. Yes. And that was something that was incredible as well. And when, now I did it really early. I think I was in one of the the early groups. So maybe that that had something to do with it. But when I was going through it, I could ask anything in the comments box. And so many times I was like, why are there not like hundreds of comments or questions in here under each, each uh, video? Because she responds within like 24 hours to your specific question. And I mean, it's like we have y'all in front of us um, during this course because you respond to our specific questions. And that has also been awesome. I've still asked questions. Yeah, it's amazing. We do have a policy that we're going to get back in 24 hours. And I mean, she is on there every single day. She she looks, she answers any questions that have been asked in the past 24 hours. And I get a notification every time. And I mean, every day I get notifications saying, this person asked the question and here was Catherine's reply. And the replies are always so, th- I mean, she's, she does such a better job than I ever could of, of really getting specific. She'll even look and go, oh, I see you live in whatever. And here's what I would suggest. And I'm like, 
this is incredible. The fact that you can get this program and get this access to to someone for five ninety seven, and you pay that once, right. and then it's done. I mean, I just think that it's for me. I've never heard of that. I've never I've never seen that anywhere. And so I know for the power of pinning, it was just really important to me that it be as uncomplicated as possible, as simple as it could possibly be, because a lot of us aren't techie, you know, we're creative people and we, this, this is a little scary. And so I think that she, the way that we have put this together and the way that she is able to explain it really comes from a place of like, man, you can do this. Like here, let me show you exactly how step by step. Listen, you all know I tell it straight. So here's some brutal honesty. You're losing money and you don't know how to turn things around, right? The past few months have been brutal for a lot of businesses. In seasons like this, it's easy to feel frustrated, lonely, and out of ideas. Let me tell you something. I have so been there. It's hard. And it's not all your fault. The way you've been taught to do business is no longer working. Let me repeat that so it really sinks in. The way you've been taught to do business is no longer working. But don't worry. I've created a training to tell you exactly what to do when you're losing money and how to create a plan to connect with clients and get your stuff sold, whether stores, events, and normal business is shut down or not. This free video training is filler free and laser focused on giving you the tools you need to dig yourself out and create a plan for your business that makes you money. Whether you have a side hustle, a small one-person business, or a huge company with tons of employees and products and services. To sign up for this free training, go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Pinterest training. This is the exact system I use for my business, whether I'm selling wedding planning services, online courses, or my book, Sleeping with a Stranger. Get all my secrets for free at ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Pinterest training. So tell me what it was like after you got done with the program. Like, what have you seen since finishing the program? First of all, did it take very long? Were you able to complete it? I think that's a big thing for a lot of people is they think, I'm not going to be able to complete it or I don't want to buy something and start it and not finish it. So you were able to finish it. Yes. And I like breezed through the first two modules and then it took me, it did take me a little bit longer to finish it, but it was incredible how quickly I started to see results from the pinning. And so one of the reasons I also like Pinterest is because you were talking about how you one pin is still giving you results from three years ago. I have two kids and we hope to have um, more And so to have something that's working, my time is so precious being a mom um, with these little guys. And so that seeing, being able to see results like that, where I'm not having to get on it every single day is, you know, that's the platform for me (laughs) where I don't have to put so much time into it. So I started seeing results immediately, but I also started realizing it still does take time, right? To pin. So tailwind, like the way that you explain the other tools that you can use in order to save time or to, you know, if you know that you have an afternoon on Saturday or an afternoon on, on Monday, then you can set everything up. And I don't know if I'm unique in this or not, but so what I figured out is I started not being able to even do that consistently. So I actually ended up using your course to teach basically a a college student who wanted to, to learn some of these things and to work with me. And so she even started pinning for me. So I'll pin sometimes, but she makes sure that everything is up and going every week. And that has been really awesome. That is such a great point that you just said, I'm sorry, I just interrupted, but I think that, you know, again, to get something for, you know, 597 or six payments of 97, however you want to do it. But in order to, you know, to get something of such incredible value for that amount of money. And then even if you are, you know, like me or, or, or like you, and you're like, okay, 
even though it's only 30 minutes a week that I need to invest in it, I just, because like you said, you're a mom, things come up, things get, things get put in front on the priority list. So to be able to hire someone like a college student to do it, because the truth is, is, uh, but to train them, because obviously you're going to be able to to afford or or pay for a for a college student that's going to be more affordable than paying like a Pinterest manager, right? And so to be able to train them with this program, that's really genius of you because the truth is is that if you are in business in any way, whether you are, you know, if you have a product you're trying to sell or you have a service that you're trying to offer and get in front of people, the truth is that, you know, honestly, any other marketing plan just isn't going to be working that long. I mean, but this is the marketing plan because we now more than ever are buying things online. I mean, we're still in the middle of the pandemic right now, as you and I are, are having this recording. And I mean, raise your hand if you have not purchased something online in the last four months. Okay. I don't think anybody can say that, you know, like <laughs> everyone has purchased something online. And so that's where people are purchasing. So now more than ever, we have to get our stuff in front of people and the power of pinning really makes that possible. And I think people think, oh, but that's just, that's impossible because there's just so much out there. And like, you just can't think about it that way, A. And B, if you have the tools, which are in the power of pinning, you get in front of them. So what kind of results have you seen from this? Yeah. So actually, I wanted to, I want to expound upon something that you said just then, and then I'll talk about the results. um, Because you reminded me another reason that I decided that Pinterest was the thing I wanted to put my money and my time into or my um, college students time into was because people who are on Pinterest are looking to buy like they are like not, they're not doing that on any other platform on Facebook, on Instagram, they're, they'll get on there just to kill time or to see what their friends are up to. They don't really have an agenda, but when they get on Pinterest, you have an agenda, like you want to redo your bedroom or you're looking for flower ideas, not just because, but you're actually looking for flower ideas because you're getting married in December and you need some ideas because you're going to buy those ideas. And um, so that's what sold me on it as well. And I, I just wanted to throw that out there because I think that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to piggyback off you now for a second, sure. <laughs> uh, but Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those things, you're exactly right. People are on there to kill time. And when you it, then interrupt them, interrupt them with um, an ad or something like that. They almost feel like, ugh, don't try to sell me something. Like, I just wanted to get on here to see my friends, babies or whatever. And with Pinterest, people do, they go in and they like, even if they aren't wanting to buy right then, they are. And I, I gave this example the other day. I was just researching. Uh, my family and I were going to San Diego. This was uh, last year. And I just was like, things to do in San Diego with kids. That's what I put in the Pinterest bar. And then up comes this pin. And it is this blogger in La Jolla, who, which is a town right outside San Diego. And I start looking all through her blog. And she is just like La Jolla mom. And she like knows all the things. And she's got all these posts about all these different things to do. And she in one of the posts posted about this uh, scooter. Okay. This scooter. Now, did I go onto Pinterest to buy a scooter? No. But talks about this scooter that is so great for the kids because it folds up, it's super easy, and it travels well, and like they can zip down those sidewalks that are right by the beach and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I got to have a scooter. You know, and I'm sure she had an affiliate link or whatever, but I bought it right there from her. And I was coming from a place of being like, oh my gosh, thank you, La Jolla mom. Like, this is so (laughs) kind of you to share this information with me. You know what I mean? Like that was my attitude versus any other platform. I would have been like, "Ugh, why are you trying to sell me a scooter? I don't need a scooter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it it is 100% where you need to be showing up. Yeah. 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 Okay, so tell me about the the results that you've had. Yeah, so um, I was seeing, and I've been keeping track monthly of, I, I have a monthly log that I put social media and Pinterest into just the numbers to see what's happening. I had like a couple thousand viewers when I was starting, when I was going through your course and starting to pin things myself. 
And after a, a couple of months of that, I realized that I really, I just wasn't going to be able, because of the other things that were pulling my attention, I needed, you know, a, someone else to be doing this for me. But I, with how clearly you had written everything out, I knew that I could train some someone and not have to spend thousands of dollars a month buying like an official, um, having someone like Catherine do it for me. So once my college student started doing it, it just, it climbed every month because I, I knew also that one of the important things with Pinterest, one of the things that you talk about is consistency. So that was really important to me. I thought I really need to give this those six months that you talk about in order to see if it really works. And I really bought your course too, almost as like an experiment. I was like, she's talking about all these things. She says that if I do all these steps in six months, then after that, I will start to see result. Like clients will actually find me this way. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to give it a good one year of making sure that someone is consistently pinning and doing this according the Zimmerman way. <laughs> so at the beginning, it was like a couple thousand. And uh, two months ago, we were all the way up to 450,000 viewers. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's been really exciting. And I'm and I'm excited for the future. And sometimes I feel a little bit guilty for saying that, because a lot of people are hurting right now. But you know, that's because I'm coming from a place too where nobody that I love has been um, horribly affected, neither job wise nor um, health wise. So I know that I'm a little bit blessed in that way. But it's, it's exciting. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think as a business owner, anyone who's a business owner, whether, like I said, you could be selling anything. I mean, you could be selling, uh, you know, blankets or artwork or calligraphy. I don't know. You could be selling anything. But I think right now is the time where you do the work that's going to pay off in the future. I am all about the long game. I have a friend who I, I, I swear she, every time I talk to her, I talk to her like every other month and she's always like, I'm just amazed how you're able to play the long game because it is a choice. You know what I mean? I, 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 we live in such a world that is instant gratification that it is a choice to do the long game and you're playing the long game right now and you have to kind of do it. You've got to set your foundation and build that correctly so that you can grow. Right. And so right now we're in a time where you've got a choice. You can either go, Oh, the pandemic and my shop closed down and, and, you know, clients aren't there and, oh, woe is me and I'm a victim and life is terrible and these are the cards I were I was dealt and they suck. Or you can come from a place of, okay, these are the cards I was dealt. Now what am I going to do with it? Right. And, you know, I look back at 2008, which was the last big, you know, crisis, which was the housing market crisis. And some of the best companies came out of that. I mean, uh, Uber, Airbnb. So it's really about your mindset. Uh, You know, are you going to choose to be defeated by this? Are you going to choose to take this time? Because we have been gifted, if you can choose to look at it that way, uh, the gift of time. I mean, if you are, you know, someone who has your own business and you're used to being out about every day and now you're having to be home, this is the time. I mean, listen, you've watched enough Netflix shows. You have you have done that. Now is the time to actually put some things into place that are going to pay off, you know, that by the end of the year, you're going to start really seeing the results. And so, yeah, I just love that you have stuck with it and you've done it. And even though you knew, listen, I'm not going to be able to give 30 minutes to this every week, but I'm going to hire someone who can. And I want to say something about that too, because a lot of people think I can't hire anyone. Now, what I would do in this situation is I would be like, okay, I'm going to pay someone a salary of 200 bucks a month. That's 50 bucks a week for them to do these things or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, to a college kid, 200 bucks a month is going to sound great. And listen, it, however long it takes them to do it, it takes them to do it. So if you say, you know, eventually you should get this down to where you're only working on this 30 minutes a week. Well, then, I mean, that's, that's great money. 50 bucks, you know, for 
30 minutes a week. That's awesome. So if you can pitch it that way to somebody, but in the event that someone then wants to spend five hours on it or something, well, then you're not out any additional money. So that's how you do that. Don't pay someone hourly. That was a big lesson I had to learn early on. So yeah, I loved what you're saying too about playing the long game. Like if this is not a hobby, if this is something you really want to see grow, if you have a, um, I hope everyone who has a business has sat down and thought through like what their goals are, because if you want to be successful and just serving your clients well, then you need to be thinking about it long term. And I feel like I've taken a lot of time growing my business because I've wanted to do each step thoroughly and well so that as I grow, I can grow intentionally and not grow with these sudden pains of like, okay, wait, now somebody wants this. Well, I've never done that before. So, and there is a little bit of that, but if you set the foundation well, and to me, Pinterest is part of that, then you are going to see the kind of results that you can, you can live on and that you can enjoy rather than uh, kind of scrambling around, not sure what you're doing or just like trying Pinterest here and there. Like you can't do it that way. You have to spend the time every week. And so that can feel overwhelming, but you're just, your course makes it so easy to follow all those steps. And I've just, I've really loved it. (laughs) Good. I'm so glad. Yeah. I just think if you are in business today, your online home is the most important thing. And, uh, you know, it's not social media. It is your online home, which is your website. And then Pinterest is what gets people to your website. And that's how people find you and they buy your product, they buy your service, whatever. And so if you're not focused on those two things right now, then we got a problem. You know, I mean, every day, I am pinning and I'm looking at my website. I am, you know, adding something to it. I am always, I mean, because I know, like, it's it's like it's like when you have a storefront if you drive by that storefront every day and it has the same window displays every day for a year you aren't going to go in there you know what i mean you got to change up your displays and it's the same thing with the website like you've got to continually keep that fresh and updated and then you got to drive people to it by using pinterest and what i what i just think is so genius is that you pin an image and then it gets repinned and it gets on people's boards. And even what you were saying a second ago about how now you've grown to 450,000, you know, clicks and all of that. What has happened is other people have been inspired by your pin in some way. They've pinned it. And those are going to begin to get repinned by other people. And it's just going to grow from doing it one time. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a no brainer. And it's been so fascinating too to see which pins are enjoyed. You know, since it's since I've only been doing this for six months, my college student and I have been kind of experimenting with different types of images, different types of wording. And an image that I thought was like so boring has been love it. so popular. And mm-hmm. um we've been so we now we've been like trying to like recreate how, you know, was it the wording? Is it actually the image? You know, what's, why is it blowing up? And it's just, it's just really cool. I didn't think that this image of some votive candles and greenery on a cocktail table would be like the big hit, but we get, we get so many clicks and views on that and shares or whatever, um, repins on that every week. It's, it's consistently our top one. So I'm like, I don't know why it's not the the bouquet with the crazy cool uh, hair piece made out of peonies, you know, but it's, I don't know, it's been that. So it's cool. That's always the same with me too. Like we'll test, and we we talk about this in the power of pinning, but uh, testing like three different graphics or whatever. And we, we show you how to do all this for free and super easy. And we share with you how to do it. And even if you don't have imagery, how you can still create pins. So, I mean, it's all in there. It's so super simple, but we'll create three and then test them. And I'm always like, really? That's the one people like? Right. like I, it's shocking to me. And But it's funny because we were actually, we had a meeting yesterday because I, I have a bit of an announcement, a fun little change up that's happening that I'll talk about probably in September or October. But so we're already talking about, okay, so if we're going to go in this direction, we need to come up with, you know, three or four different pin ideas and start seeing, you know, which one will resonate. 
and everything because it's it's a complete departure because that's what I do. <laughs> I just keep departing. I'm like, oh, that was fun. Now let me do this. That makes no sense. Let me make flowers and then let me write a memoir. Like that, what? Yeah. And now we've got another big departure, but it's fine. It'll be good. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what that is. I hope this episode is blowing your mind so far. For years, I hated Pinterest, and I held a grudge for the clients it stole from me when it first came out on the scene. But believe me when I say, Pinterest has earned my forgiveness. Today, I do almost all of my marketing through Pinterest, and I get inquiries from big budget ideal clients every single week. If you want to start using Pinterest to get leads and money in the bank, you need the power of pinning. Check it out now at thepowerofpinning.com. So tell me, you've, you've mentioned it a couple times, but just help reiterate like the simplicity of the course and how easy it is to follow. Yeah, you just, everything is laid out so clearly. And as a video will be playing, I'll be thinking, but how do I do that? And then like seconds later or in the next video, you'll explain it. And um, even when I don't understand something, which is, actually not very often because you're so clear in the videos themselves, I can type a question in the comments section and I hear an answer back within 24 hours. So it's just, it makes a lot of sense. It's easy to understand and it's easy to follow. And I love that you also give time throughout the course to, you know, we're doing it as we're going through it. You can't just sit down and like watch it, but you actually make time and um, space to create pins and to experiment with things as we're going through the course. And I think that's really important. And that that helps me learn. I, I can't learn just from hearing. I need to be like doing or seeing. There has to be all, as many senses as possible of the five senses need to be <laughs> engaged and involved. And I feel like this course does a really good job of that as well. That was really important to me. I said, listen, it's got, we, if someone were to go through it, they need to be able to get through it in 14 days or fewer if they really commit to it. And I want by the end of those 14 days for them not to just have the information to have this killer, you know, Pinterest platform, but I want them to have done it, like to have, to have actually created it and to be, you know, now all they have to do is maintain it. And so I love that. Okay. So if someone is listening who's kind of on the fence about purchasing the power of pinning, what would you say to them? I mean, I just don't know why you wouldn't purchase it. If you're on the fence, that means you need it. And (laughs) you should, this is the one that you should get because I don't know, I just haven't seen anything like this with as much clarity and anything so simple to take you through the entire process of pinning. So the power of pinning is just so easy to follow and so clear I don't know a better way to learn how to do Pinterest because you have all these videos, but if you have any questions about your own experience or something that's not working for you, you can just type it in the comments and then you get an answer back um, so quickly. So yes, like a super thoughtful, thorough answer. It's incredible. It really is like just having someone right there, like your own Pinterest manager. So it's awesome. Yeah. And I just think just to drive it home, I think that marketing, there's so many different ways that you can do it. This is the least expensive. I mean, after you've made the investment in power of pinning, then it's free. You're not having to pay like you do Facebook ads and Instagram ads and stuff like that. And so it's just, to me, it's a no brainer. Like it's just a no brainer. So, okay. I've just so enjoyed talking to you. Tell me, because I ask everyone who's on the podcast, if you had Oprah money, so billions of dollars, and you had to spend it on yourself, what would you buy? I knew you were going to ask this, and I forgot to think about an answer. <laughs> so, um, I love your answer about hair because I'm terrible at hair, and I feel like that's a really – that would be amazing. But I love fashion, so I would probably use it to have some kind of stylist putting outfits together for me every day like 
five of them and I can pick which one. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Have you ever seen like on reality shows or something when there's when they like have a stylist and they are going on a trip and they put everything together in those bags, like the like the jewelry and the bet like everything is to get and I'm like, that would be so nice. Like you just yes. arrive and everything it just looks flawless and put yes. together and that's I mean down to the freaking gloves. Yes. It's incredible. So yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. That's really good. Okay. Well, this has been wonderful. Tell us, Emily, where we can find you, where we can follow along on your journey. Mm, yeah, I am at, uh, my business is called Emily K Floral Atelier, and that's spelled the French way, but the website is www.emilykfloral and K is spelled K-A-Y-E emilykfloral.com. So you can go to my website there. My Instagram handle is the same, Emily K A Y E Floral. And you can follow along. I love uh, your approach to Instagram has been one of the most freeing things that I have heard mm -hmm. on the marketing part of my journey. Early on, I remember you saying over and over again to use Instagram just as a portfolio and not to stress out about, you know, pulling all of these clients from there. Yeah. And so I have really taken that to heart and gosh, it has freed up my soul so much to enjoy. I think some people are super tired of Instagram, but mm -hmm. it has freed up my emotions and my brain to really enjoy Instagram. So anyway, all that to say, I put lots of, I just put my favorite pictures on there. And so my Instagram is a great place to go because it's a lot of inspiring images. Um, I do weddings, but I love doing elaborate hair pieces and just trying to be original and creative. So that and on my blog, I do the same thing. So go and have a look and hopefully be inspired um, by those things because I am an artist at heart. So I love to, I love to create just for the joy of, of creating beautiful things. Mm, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being on here today and sharing your experience and everything. It is such a delight to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I wish I could do this with every single one of my students. I wish I could. This would be amazing. I am so honored. This has been such a pleasure. I don't know what I would have done, honestly, without following you. It just would have taken me longer or I would have been more discouraged. I don't know. But you have been my guide, especially at the beginning um, when I was putting everything together and figuring out what to do and where to do marketing and all of that. You've played a huge part in that. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for trusting me. I, do, I don't take that lightly at all. Like that, it makes me tear up a little bit hearing it because it's just, uh, you know, we do work really hard. And my, my goal is always just to be as authentic and as real as possible, even if it's hard to hear. And so anytime I hear that, it just it, it it encourages me to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yes, please, please do. And, you know, as a fellow mother, that especially, I'm just so thankful for you. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, I am thankful for you. So gosh, thank you so much for just sharing all of that. And I just, I wish you the best. And I know we'll talk again. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, I hope so. I'd love that anytime. Emily is playing the long game, y'all. She said it best. When you build a strong business foundation and use Pinterest to do it, you're going to see the results you can rely on and enjoy. It's not too late to shore up that foundation. If you want to get on the Pinterest train, go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Pinterest training to get a free Pinterest video tutorial. It costs you nothing and you get insight into how to work Pinterest and how to make it work for you. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Emily. We loved having you. All right, guys. I'll see you next week right here on Zimmerman Podcast. If you loved what you heard today, or even if you liked it a lot, you should subscribe and leave a review. We'll see you back here next time in the Zimmerman Podcast.